Hello family, it's Dr. Yogi here and it's so good to see you today and be amongst the presence of greatness because you are great. So today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the family medicine boards. I wanted to make this video because I felt like when I was going through this process, oh, well, I'm still going through this process, but before when I was trying to figure out what this process looked like, I could not find a lot of information on YouTube. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a video. Maybe someone else can benefit from this. So if you're interested to know what family medicine boards is, how I'm studying for family medicine boards, what's that, you know, the typical procedures, then stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this anywhere that you share cool content. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I will start with what family medicine boards are. So boards in general for family medicine or any specialty is a standardized test. Essentially, the test is to make sure that amongst the family medicine programs in the nation, we are all learning the same thing. We are all starting at the same baseline um, when we graduate. This test is taken during your third year of family medicine training. So <laughs> that is where I am right now. Not a game. All right, let's move into some general information about the test. The test is offered in April and November, so it's only offered two times a year. Most, in most scenarios, when you're in family medicine residency, you tend to take that April test, you take it before you graduate. However, with everything going on with coronavirus, they postponed the April testing date, so now the April testing date is in July. The test costs $1,300, some residencies do offer uh, reimbursement. The registration for the test usually starts at the beginning of December and extends into the beginning of March. Uh, and I say that because after that deadline, you have late fees tacked on if you try to register after. All right, now let's go through the general timeline to prepare for boards. I feel like there is no information out there about that except in the candidate um, handbook. So I think that this might be a little helpful. At least for me, I was, I'm really big on like kind of being proactive and planning. And so it was nice to know, oh, you know, hey, this is when I need to have this done. This is when I need to have this done. Thank you so much for informing me. So fear not, I am here for you. So the timeline essentially starts, as I mentioned before, with your online registration. For your registration, you can register in um, early December to late February. When you get into March, like the early part of March, you are at a risk of incurring that $100 um, late fee. So try to get your stuff in early December to late February. You will also need your program director's approval. And this is a little vague for me because it's been so long, but I think it was something I did um, like all electronically. You put all your information in and then it's the um, certification exam will send some type of something over to your program director and they can give you the okay that you can sit for your boards. The other thing that has to be completed before you can even register for your exam are your um, continued medical education activities, your CME. You need 50, 50 of these points um, and it kind of shows you the breakdown on your American Board of Family Medicine website uh, under your physician portfolio. All right, next in mid to late March, that will be the time that you can select your um, testing date and testing center. So now that you've selected your test date and your test site, you have up to five days prior to the exam to withdraw, say if something happens like an emergency, a family emergency, or you get sick uh, and you need to withdraw your test, you have up to five days prior, and that would be a $35 fee. However, if you wait between day four and day one prior to your test, it is a $150 fee. So, but that option is there for you in case something comes up. Now you can change your test date or your test site 48 hours before the exam without a penalty. So that is also there as an option for you as well, if you need it. All right, so you've scheduled, you are going in, you're excited. Now April is here and it is time for you to take your test. So now you've taken your test and typically the results come back within three to seven business days. Now this is just a prelim result, meaning uh, if you are someone that is well above the minimal passing or well below the minimal passing, you will get a 
prelim pass or fail. However, if you're someone right there on the borderline of that minimal passing, you will have to wait until the actual final score comes out before you know if you passed or failed. It usually takes about six weeks for that final result to come out. All right, so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the exam structure. There has been a couple of changes actually within the last two years. So the test is a computer-based system. Uh, it is made up of four sections of 75 questions and you are allotted 95 minutes per section. So it's essentially about a minute and 15 seconds or 90 mm -hmm. or 75 seconds per question, which is a pretty good amount of time. Um, and then you are allotted 100 minutes for break. And this is pooled time, so that means you can break it up however you want, but that time is available if you need it and how you need it. One thing that I will say that is different from previous tests is there used to be these topic specific modules and they would be things like sports medicine, ambulatory care, urgent care, maternity care. It was like a whole bunch, a whole list of things. Um, and you could pick a module and then you'd have like 40 questions based specifically in that topic module. They did away with that. I'm not really, I don't know all the ins and outs, but it's not a thing anymore. You just do those four sections with the 75 questions now. So let's talk a little bit about test date procedures and maybe some things that I recommend. You know, you can take it and leave it. One thing that I would say is prior to your test day, make sure that you go to your testing site to see exactly where it is, see what the parking situation is. You know, if it's like some hidden door that you were supposed to find, you don't want to be searching around for that on test day. That's just an unnecessary stress. Also, you know, if you can try to go during the time that your test is going to be. So test starts at 8 a.m. So you should try to make that trip around 8 a.m. And that also tells you like, how's the traffic when you're doing that commute? Um, all of those things matter because we don't need no unnecessary stress the day of the test. So if you can do things that most resemble what test day would be like, that would be beneficial to you. So on test day, you wanna arrive 30 minutes before your um, scheduled test time, at least 30 minutes. You can arrive an hour early and do some light studying in your car if you'd like, um, but no less than 30 minutes. If you arrive 30 minutes late, they will likely decline you from coming in. And that would be so terrible. It'd be a waste of all your time and effort into studying, the money that you've invested. So just do yourself a favor and arrive at least 30 minutes early. Things that you will need on test day include your exam e-ticket. This is different than your confirmation email. So make sure that you go on your ABFM website and you can go under, I think it's like certification exam and it will show, you know, print e-ticket. Make sure you do that. Also, you need to come in with a government issued photo ID. That can be like just the ID card, that can be a passport, that could be a driver's license, but it does need to be government issued. Another thing I would recommend bringing on test day would include your snacks, your drinks. Um, if you have, you know, music and you wanna put your earphones in outside of the testing center, you can do that. Um, outside of the testing room. You don't have to leave the center, but you know, um, and, and of course your study material that you would like to bring in with you as well. So speaking about studying, uh, I will talk a little bit about how I'm studying for my exam as well as what things are available for board review. I will say that ABFM does not have like dedicated study material that's all encompassing or comprehensive. So you do have to find other methods to study. Um, there are things like online review courses. Um, this isn't, I don't know if I need to say this isn't sponsored, but it's not sponsored. So there are a couple of things that you can do and some of my classmates have done as well for studying. And that includes things like online QBanks and there's UWorld, there's Roth's Review, there's Board Vitals. And I think there's like the Pass Machine or something like that. I did not use any of those, but some of my co-residents did use Ross Review and some of them liked it quite a bit. There are also review books that you can use. Um, some people use, I think there's one called the Family Medicine Review Book by Battens, Batons, B-A-T-T-O-N-S, or that's an apostrophe S. Yes. Um, that's one, I have not used that one. And there's also the uh, Family Medicine uh, Board Review Exam book by Graber and Wilbur. Um, that one I have seen people use, like they give you a case and then you have to kind of like go through the case and answer questions. Um, and then they have like little funny remarks in there to kind of keep you engaged. 
So how I'm studying for my boards is a combination of various things. Um, throughout training, we have to take something called the in-training service exam or the ITE, the in-training exam. Some people call it the in-service exam. So I put them together, the in-training service exam. But ours is called the ITE, the in-training exam. Now, after you take the test, they do give you the questions that are available to you as well as the critiques. And so um, I pretty much went and printed them and then bound them, spiral bound them, so that I can um, have it to study because this is the, the ITE questions will resemble um, what is going to happen on the boards, ideally. So I did that for the last three years because uh, that's what was available. And then I'm, I used that to study. Other things, um, that I would recommend is uh, that you can't even see this, but the USS, USPSTF uh, grade A and B recommendations to study and then knowing them, just like calling them off to yourself. You can have people, you know, call out, hey, okay, cervical, cervical screening or cervical cancer screening, what's the recommendation? And then you spit what that recommendation is. And so the final thing I used was the AAFP, the American Academy of Family Physicians Board Review Series. They do release this um, and it's like, a, you can actually go in person to the live lecture. I think it's like an extended weekend, like a long weekend. Um, but then after that, they do offer the recordings for something that you can purchase. This is the board review binder. Um, it comes with, all the lecture slides that they talk about, which is what's in here. It's all the lecture slides um, that are discussed during the the lectures the, that they have live. And so they record all the lectures and they give you it, uh, a little flash drive with all the lectures on them so you can watch them and then make notes in your um, binder. So how I bring this all together is I do some questions. I use the ABFM questions um, as well as like the ITE questions. And when I come into um, something I didn't know, I will jot that in my folder. So that way this will be my like complete comprehensive um, review book. That's what I'm going to do with that. That is my plan. Another thing before you even start your um, studying is I would recommend obviously making a study schedule because in residency things are you know time is limited and if you don't schedule something it won't happen and so what i did is i went and i looked at all my ites my in train training exams and looked at my week areas and from there i made like a study schedule which you know you can't really see that well but i put my week areas first because i think that that needed the tackle <laughs> need to be tackled first and then i would cross through um you know, them as I went through. I would watch my lecture and then I would do my questions. And so that way it's like seeing the material multiple times and it tends to be ingrained. All right, guys, so that concludes this video. I hope that it was helpful. If anybody is going through this journey currently, please leave a comment below about what you're doing to study. Until the next one, guys, I'll see you soon.